Hello, 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 beautiful people. How are you today? Today um, is another podcast session, Relaxed and Raunchy Relationship with me, Ingrid Calloway, accompanied by super duper guest of today, Lisa uh, Gumik. Is that how? Gumik, nearly there. Gumik, yeah, almost there. Gumik. Uh, and Lisa is a um, clarity coach, a chaos to clarity coach, and she helps people go from chaos to clarity, transforming stress, anxiety, and overwhelm to well-being, calm, clear minds, and bodies. Oh, especially during the COVID lockdown, you know, um, who doesn't have a stressful and chaotic mind and body? I don't know. Uh, maybe some saints out there, but <laughs> even myself, I, I experience uh, some sort of chaos. Yep, definitely. So she has worked towards finding clarity in her life, following the chaos, um, the chaos of chronic stress, anxiety, and overwhelm, which led her to chronic illness, a car accident, glandular fever, Lyme disease, shingles, autoimmunity, and a mind and body that left her unable to work with chronic fatigue, impaired cognition, and 40 plus symptoms. Oh my God. Mm. Wow, that's a lot. That's a mm. lot. And Lisa has training in a range of modalities from a Bachelor of Business Management to holistic nutritional therapist, um, energetic health, NLP, EFT, or the tapping um, method, coaching, psycho, uh, neuroimmunology, that's a mouthful, and yeah. Reiki <laughs> that allow her to support the transformation for her clients to a place of clarity. Welcome, Lisa. I'm really glad to have Lisa on board now. Back then, I was one of her uh, guests, so now uh, she is my guest. So welcome, Lisa. Thanks, Ingrid. It's great to be here having a chat about relationships, which is your specialty. <laughs> so about you as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I'll introduce you, Ingrid. Ingrid is amazing. She's the founder relationship coach and chief executive officer of, how do you pronounce your business name? Kayangan. Kayangan. Yes. Which, uh, which is a really beautiful name and it means, it means heaven. And it's a wellness clinic that she has in Sydney. She's been a relationship coach for 11 years and a spa therapist for 21 years, mainly in the five star, in five star hotels and spas in Sydney. Uh, so she's used to looking after thousands of stressed clients from all over the world. Um, I think a lot of people who come off flights uh, in the past have been quite stressed and those who are coming off flights at the moment might be quite stressed <laughs> and needing your support. Um, she practices from Kayang and in, can you pronounce that again, please, Ingrid? Kayangan. Kayangan, beautiful, in Fire Dock um, and also from clients' homes, offices and hotel rooms and online. Her work uh, has always focused on stress, relaxation and relationships. And she has a kind soul, always seeking to seek out the support and healing process of many stressed people, broken, lonely and single, uh, single hearts, stressed out parents and loving couples across her path. She does one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, group workshops and wellness at work programs for companies to create better engagement and harmony for their team members. Beautiful, Ingrid. It's always great to chat with you. And it's actually so lovely to hear people's bios and your bio in terms of like where you've come from and your experience and what you do. It's um, sort of, it gives meaning to, to what you do and what you can bring people. Definitely. We're, we all come from somewhere. And then uh, I feel traditionally for caring people like us, like uh, healers or mm. practitioners, uh, we must have the story of, you know, um, rock bottom, Some, somehow rock bottom, and then we transform uh, from that. So it's always yeah. good to hear uh, someone else's story. And yeah. I'm curious to find out your why. Why is it that you do what you do? Because previously, you know, you um, had the bachelor uh, business management and then completely changed to now become holistic practitioner. Yeah, it's, uh, it really is chalk and cheese. And so back in 2013, uh, 2013, I thought I was on top of the world. You would have seen a woman who thought she had it all. You know, mm -hmm. I was marrying my partner who I'd been with for seven years. 
I was performing at work, I was winning awards, you know, I, I felt like I was on top of the world. I remember saying this to myself at one stage, but unfortunately, uh, that's actually not what was happening. So I was stressed, I was anxious, I was overwhelmed, and that also then accumulated into uh, chronic illness and I guess chronic stress in the body. And I started to have all these symptoms and started off with glandular fever and then an autoimmune disease and Lyme disease and a car accident and shingles and heavy metal toxicity. So a lot of chronic infectious illness mm -hmm. that uh, because I wasn't prepared emotionally, mentally, physically before that point, I found it really, really difficult when all of this happened. Yeah. So I went on this journey of I wasn't able to work and I wasn't, I wasn't functioning. I was pretty much in the four walls of my house for many years. And I would just, um, you know, I had a lot of problems with like cognition, processing things and fatigue. So I wasn't really doing a lot. So I really had to look outside of the box to, to get well. And so I went on this massive journey of exploring those physical, mental, emotional and spiritual aspects hmm. of wellness to where I am now, which is a practitioner in, I guess, the chaos to clarity space. So helping people, you know, with a lot of the spiritual, emotional, practical things so that they can they can live a beautiful and amazing life and don't have to suffer like I did. Yes. Uh, so I'm just wondering whether there is still a space for a GP <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, you know, typically they recommend uh, drugs. They see the, the symptoms, uh, but I'm not sure whether they kind of like cure the, uh, the roots of the problems. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, some really good points there, Ingrid, in terms of there's definitely a space for GPs and Western medicine. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's so important that people look at all different aspects of their health and wellness and don't discount aspects. Yeah. So, you know, I still see a um, practitioner quite regularly just to, you know, see that I'm on track and, and check my, my, you know, my bloods and, and different markers and things. Yeah. But there's also this other aspect that was missed, you know, that A, that people missed, but I had also very much missed on my journey for most of it, which was, you know, that mental, emotional and spiritual aspect. And they all contribute to wellness. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, emotions on their own can keep us stuck mm. uh, or, or keep us in stress. And so it's really looking at it from a really holistic perspective, from the mind and the body because the body and the mind are not disconnected they are all very much interconnected yeah oh great thank you for sharing that and so ingrid what is your why well um i grew up i was born and bred in indonesia and um funny that i felt I wasn't home back home, so to speak, because the yeah. mindset, I mean, not that I don't love my family and, uh, you know, my friends back there, um, but then I was being preconditioned a certain way that was not quite me. But then, you know, with all the um, uh, shame and guilt being thrown into, you know, um, my preconditioning, I feel like, oh my God, you know, what I could learn now, it's so damaging of um, preconditioning a child uh, with a lot of shame and guilt. Mm. It's, not, it's not good for, um, you know, uh, any child, um, especially being an adult, it does uh, a lot of damage. That's mm. what I found. But yeah. then um, in 1996, I came to Australia to get married to my first husband. And then I let go of that marriage after 10 years because it was an abusive relationship yeah. and I lost everything. So I lost my uh, properties, furniture, but then the main thing is I gained myself back. So I gained Ingrid back. So that's, that's a, a, the biggest win ever. Um, and then I gained, um, unfortunately, I gained depression, anxiety. So then I went back to college to study counseling and life coaching. And mm. straight away, I knew that I would be a coach, mm. not a counselor. And straight away, I knew that my niche would be in relationship. So yeah, self-healing journey, it was, it was fun. It was like 
mind blowing, eye opening, you know, paradigm shifting. Um, I love that sort of like juicy stuff. I call it juicy stuff. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And your experience shapes you. And then sometimes, you know, you just know, like you knew that you didn't want to be a, a counsellor and that you wanted to be a coach and it just feels right. And so your experience really shapes where you are. Yes, that's right. And I'm totally grateful of, you know, the 10 the year marriage, the uh, various preconditioning, because now I can see it uh, for my clients as well. Yeah. You know, I can definitely relate because I've been there, done that. And what can we do to uh, create shift or change for um, my clients that way? So yeah, it was very valuable. Yeah. And so uh, if I can ask you a question, because you've gone through a hell of a lot in your life, healing and everything, yeah. uh, PTSD, um, how do you, you know, uh, come out? Do you have any three tips about PTSD and how to overcome that? Yeah, so PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. And so it can come about a number of ways. Um, you know, chronic stress can put people into post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, you know, the, yeah, the ongoing stress, various traumas that people have experienced. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing called little T traumas and big T traumas. So there's the big traumas, you know, there's abuses, you know, car accidents. And then you have things like, you know, problems with chronic health or chronic stress or, you know, even a little things that you would classify as a little experience so you know a, an argument that you had with a family member or or you know you're no longer talking to a particular person so they themselves can create stress in the body or result in post-traumatic stress disorder yeah and so trauma gets stored in the body and in the nervous system and in organs and tissues but it gets stored in the body gets trapped and so we're not able to you, or you know, someone who's going through it is not able to sort of come out of that process on their own. So even though they might try different things, then it can be really challenging. So my three tips in relation to someone going through you know trauma or stress, anxiety, overwhelm is number one is to not judge, mm -hmm. not judge where you're at and what you're experiencing because ultimately. When you have symptoms of like stress, anxiety, overwhelm, it's the body doing the best they can to help and support you, but it's saying, hey, there's something not right here and it actually wants your help. But obviously, you know, we don't, often don't know how to help the body. Hmm. And so number one is to not judge because when you judge, it goes into that cycle and that cycle gets bigger and bigger. So, and you, you can get stuck in that thought process. Number two would really be to uh, seek out help and support and professional help and support. So not to be and remain stuck in, in what you're going through uh, and thinking that there's no way out. So if you've worked with different practitioners that haven't resonated with you, then find another practitioner and or find another practitioner that has a different modality that they might be able to help and support you with. So a lot of people will sort of see the same practitioners in the same modalities and some people are sort of stuck and I've been stuck in this process and these thoughts and this trauma for so long that I can't get out of it. Hmm. So there are different ways and methods. So one of my favourite tools and techniques, and I guess this comes through to step three in terms of empowering yourself with your own tool and technique is look into something called EFT, which is emotional freedom techniques, which is also known as tapping. So literally, you know, you're tapping on different parts of the body, which are different acupuncture points and different meridians of the body. And when you tap on these spots and these points of the body, it gets energy moving and flowing. It calms the limbic system, which is the emotional center in the brain and calms the nervous system down and helps to release some of that you know, trauma and those experiences and those emotions that are actually trapped in your body because that's what PTSD is. It's those emotions and experience being trapped in your body. And this tapping process is actually evidence-based. There's over 140 clinical trials that have been done on the effectiveness of EFT and a lot of them are in relation to the effectiveness on on trauma 
And so, you know, vet, uh, veterinarians um, who have PTSD and it's highly, highly effective. So something that people can do for themselves right now is obviously I've kind of gone through a number of different points and there's a, there's a process for going through it. And obviously working with a practitioner helps people to really get supported with the process of clearing out um, the PTSD. But one thing that people can do for themselves is just tap on their or on your collarbone. So the collarbone point is linked to the kidney meridian in the body. And it's a really big one because it also supports the adrenals, our adrenaline and our, and our nervous system. So just tapping on that point, even if it's in silent, is a really good way to calm the body uh, and also create safety within the body. And if I can actually just create one other really simple one that people can do. It's a process called havening. And that is literally um, just going up and down and rubbing the, so it's going down the, like the side of your like arm. Yeah, and down to your elbows and back again. And so it's like you're giving yourself a beautiful hug. It feels really relaxing. It calms the nervous system. It works with the meridian line at the back here, which is called the triple warmer which is that fight, flight, freeze, that sort of trauma, releasing that trauma meridian. Uh, it's so beautiful. So it's something that people can do to help and support themselves. Fantastic. And with the collarbone thing, is it right on the collarbone? So where your collarbone is, yeah. go down about, uh, about an inch and then out to the side and you'll find some soft oh, squidgy bits. Yeah, beautiful. That's a perfect spot. Just where you've got some soft squidgy bits and just tap on that. You can tap one handed or you can tap with both hands. And it's, you know, if you're in a stressful situation or having an argument with someone or you've seen something that's really quite distressing, then you can just tap on that spot. And, uh, and that alone can be really powerful. That's great. Thank you very much. Because PTSD, uh, typically people relate to, you know, war. After war, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. get a lot of trauma, but not necessarily just that situation. It can be so many things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with what's happening at the moment and what people are going through, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with loss of jobs, with, you know, COVID and potential illness um, and, you know, these scenes and things that we're, we're seeing locally and across the globe, that itself is enough to create, to put someone into a trauma state because they're seeing all of this and they're ultimately trauma state is, is the body's not able to process the information and it gets stuck. Yeah. So it's really about ways of helping the body to release this so it's not stuck. And, and that there's a misconception that PTSD is just, um, you know, war related. It absolutely is, you know, an episode or an experience can put someone into that state, but there's other ways uh, and reasons for people getting into that state as well. But there is, there is hope just like there's, you know, hope for people who have stress, anxiety and, uh, and overwhelming, you know, you help people with relaxation. So, and there's evidence to support a lot of these, these tools and, and ways about things. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. So what about um, yourself, Ingrid? What are three tips relating to your expertise that you can share in terms of relationships yes, and helping so I, supporting people? Um, I like giving people um, practical tips, obviously, uh, so they can uh, practice straight away. They can make a change straight away. Great. Day number one, I will say to communicate about future plans together. As you know, you know, with the COVID lockdown, uh, everybody's stressed right now, but then it is really, really nice to have something to look forward to. Yeah. So if we can uh, discuss together with your partner, hey, what is it that you would like to do a goal or a dream that perhaps together mm -hmm. you can uh, manifest it together. It's just beautiful. And it can shift the stress from the right now to, oh, isn't it nice if we can reach that together? So that's number one. Number two is to reframe negative thoughts and uh, talk. Yeah, so instead of, oh, because of COVID, I lost my job. Uh, mm -hmm. If we can change that, reframe that to because of COVID, I keep my friends safe, mm -hmm. for example, or because of COVID, I get opportunity to actually change what I did mm -hmm. to what I always want to do. So 
So if you can reframe that, uh, that completely shifts the mind. That's, that's beautiful. And then the last one is um, to avoid the uh, word never and the word always. Say, for example, if we are having an argument and um, you know, start to want to prove a point with our partner, you know, uh, every couple must have arguments here and there. Uh, oh, you never uh, buy me you know, gifts. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I, I've done, I done this. I done yes. this with my husband just the other day. Oh, these oh, generalizations, my poor uh, husband. Yeah, you know, you always uh, put me in an awkward, you know, situation with my family, something like that, right? So it's not just the words that we say, but also the energy that mm. comes behind the word always and the word never. Um, if for example, you say, oh, you always love me. I love how you love me. That's okay. But it's just, <laughs> unfortunately, the word, uh, the usage of the word never and always, um, yeah. almost always from the negative sort of uh, viewpoint. So if you can be aware of, oops, I'm saying never again, but actually no, he gave me some gifts, a uh, uh, a year ago or a month ago, I just forgot that he he gave that gift. So it's not like he never gave me a gift. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm writing this down, Ingrid, because never and always is really important. It's such a good one, and and one that we forget. And when the heat of the moment, we do say these words. You never do this. You always do this. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, th those are something that it's just a, a default default yeah. mechanism that we uh, use because it's just the easiest uh, form of pointing and blaming. Yeah. Uh, but if we can be aware of the usage of the word never and always, uh, that'll be great. So those are my three tips. Beautiful. So yeah. never, never and always. Yes. So people, now it comes to the fun part of the podcast. We guess through and false statement from Lisa. Lisa said she loves coffee so much she drinks it daily. Or statement number two, Lisa loves coffee so much. She does coffee enema daily. <gasps> enema. <laughs> I think I have to guess number two is correct because it's just so juicy. I can, I can feel a juicy story behind it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, I think the juicy story is, so obviously one is uh, I do do coffee enemas daily because it's really beautiful for cleansing the liver and for the bowel. And I guess a not so funny story is that I have challenges with my bowel. So that's one of the reasons that I do and I have to do enemas is to, to clean my bowel. But on the funny side is like it always comes up like even unexpectedly in conversation. And my husband is always like rolling his eyes saying, Lisa, like, why are you bringing this up? So we had some friends over um, last week uh, for dinner to celebrate his birthday. Yeah. And um, I created a, I had, had batched up a, big pot of, um, of coffee that I did for two days and I was sort of pouring it out. Uh, so we went out to dinner, you know, it cooled down. And uh, I was, as I were there, I was like pouring into this big jar. And they're like, what's all that coffee for? And they made a joke. And they're so like, maybe it's for like coffee enemas. And I sort of went quiet and looked at them and I'm like, actually it is. And it they is. burst out like <laughs> laughing because they were absolutely not expecting me to say that's, that's what it's used for. So, um, I mean, you know, talking about um, bowel movements and, you know, poos and the shape of your poo and what it looks like and what colour is and what texture it is. Yeah. A lot of people cringe and go, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I would, like, Especially no, during dinner. <laughs> yeah, like, don't talk about this. But it's something that is so important to us and to our health. And, it, and it's an indication of, uh, of the health of our gut. Yeah. Um, I love talking about you know, poos and bowel, and and bowel <laughs> movements. Uh, but it's not everyone's flavour. So I, I, I have a little bit of a laugh, but I don't know about everyone else. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Our household of four people always talk about poo. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's great. So if, we're it, open. if it means if something's not right, then, you know, it's being highlighted and you can, you know, you can work through it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Very important. <sighs> So Ingrid, what is your, uh, what's your, your um, true and false? Oh, um, well, uh, 
my mom combed my husband's hair looking for nits. Or number two, um, my daughter combed my husband's hair looking for nits. I think I'm going to go with your, uh, did you say your mother or your mother-in-law? looking? My for mother. <laughs> your mother looking in your, I think that one just, that one just takes the cake. <laughs> no, it's actually my daughter. It's the second statement that is correct. Um, so, uh, believe me, in 45 years of, you know, being a human being, I've never experienced nits before until yeah. my little one went to kindy and guess what? Yeah. The three of us, my, my eldest, my uh, youngest and myself got nits and oh, it is just so um, frustrating yeah. because they're so, um, uh, such, a, such a pest. So they stay for a long time, make uh, the head super duper itchy, and uh, then the pr uh, procedure of getting rid of, uh, you know, the treatment, the nip treatment and combing of the hair, especially if you have long hair like I have, like my elders have, it's just um, a painful uh, process. But then, <laughs> because I did my, uh, my uh, daughter's hair, and then my husband had to do my hair, then the little one, one time, you know, start uh, combing uh, my husband's hair because, well, she hasn't done anyone's hair yet. You know, all this mid treatment. So she, she felt like she had to do daddy's hair now. It's very turn. <laughs> so cute. I know, I know. But I don't love nits. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think anyone loves, loves nits. All, all, all those gray hairs. Yeah. <laughs> Now, beautiful people, thank you so much for watching and listening to our collaboration today. We come to the end of our podcast. We hope that you learn a thing or two about practical things that you can do to de-stress, to become more relaxed, um, add raunchiness into rela your relationship and empower yourself in what you do today and beyond. Actually, I forgot one question. You did, you did. <laughs> How uh, do you relax or add raunchiness into your relationship? How do I? I think I'll go with how. How do I relax? Okay. So how do I relax? Is um, I go down by the water. So not far from where I live is uh, obviously living in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, down in Roselle, there's a really beautiful place just to walk down, and it's not far away. And just go and relax. Watch the water. Sit in the park. Um, I'm kind of looking in this direction because it's sort of in that direction. I can see some tree, like we've got some beautiful trees in the backyard. Yeah. So really connecting with nature. It's one of the simplest things. Yeah. But then I guess if we, if I do sort of the the relationship part, one of the way that I, ways that I relax is cuddles on the couch with my husband. Yeah. So you know it's as simple as. Um, you know, watching television and obviously watching television is not, you know, raunchy or romantic, but, you know, after a busy, a busy week and sometimes you just want to unwind, you don't want to think about things and you don't want to meditate or do a yoga or whatever it is, but just laying on the couch, yeah. um, you know, with each other is really nice. So, you know, we've got a long couch and he's on one side and I'm on the other and just that connection and that closeness is, is really, really beautiful. So some people might call it raunchy, not quite. <laughs> um, but but it's a way of it's a way of relaxing and building up the right. connection in the relationship. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. So people, if you need more support, um, you know, to become clearer about your life, about your health, please connect with Lisa. How can do uh, how can they do that, Lisa? Uh, thanks so much, Ingrid. So my website, lisagumanik.com, that's G-U-M-I-E-N-I-U-K.com, as well as my Facebook group, which is Chaos to Clarity Reset, and then also my Instagram and Facebook pages, which is Lisa Gumanik Coach. Wonderful. Thank you. And people, if you need more help with your relationship issues, of course, uh, you can connect with me. Remember that you don't have to wait until you are on the verge of a divorce to connect with a relationship coach, because I do believe prevention is better than cure. Now, you are most welcome to stalk me online. No threats, but you can stalk me online. Uh, and you can book a call to ask more questions. Uh, just pop your details on www.kayangan.com. .com.au. That is K-A-H 
Y A N G A N. <laughs> we have such unique names, you know, my business and my, my, my surname. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, and, and not forgetting people who don't know how to spell or pronounce it, then just yeah, think of it right. in, in like it, it means heaven. Yeah, it means heaven. Yeah. So, people, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ingrid Galloway, and I look forward to connect with you more next time. I have more uplifting and fun chat just like this one with local and global business owners because I really believe that this is the perfect time to connect um, and support each other as human beings. So Absolutely. keep well and lots of love. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thanks so much, Ingrid.